I'm Chris Velasco with the Washington Post Help Desk, where we help you make sense of the tech in your life. And if there's one thing people keep asking us to make sense of, it's 5G networks. How fast they are, where you can use them, whether they're worth buying new phones for, there's truly a lot to unpack. But because airlines and wireless carriers have been duking it out, people are talking about 5G all over again. We're here to unpack why and what that means for you. When the help desk checked last year, we found that a lot of our time spent on 5G wasn't really faster or all that different than on 4G. And that's because, like many of you, we only had access to two flavors of 5G. First, there is millimeter wave 5G, which all three wireless carriers use to some extent. This is the fastest, most impressive 5G out there. This is the stuff that'll let you download entire seasons of shows in just a few minutes, but there is a catch. It uses super high frequency radio waves to move that data around, and those waves can't travel very far, and they're not great at punching through walls either, which explains why you'll mostly find this kind of 5G just randomly out on the street, because there's a transmitter or node basically pointing right at you. The second flavor is low band 5G, which isn't nearly as fast as millimeter wave, but it does reach a lot further. This is the stuff that basically feels like regular 4G, and if you've seen the 5G logo on your phone while you're sitting inside, this is almost certainly what you've been using. If you have AT&T or Verizon service, this has just been your status quo. But T-Mobile has been a little different. Because it basically ate Sprint, it got access to a juicy chunk of radio waves between those two extremes, which allowed T-Mobile to launch another flavor called Midband. Mid-band 5G can be a lot faster than the low-band stuff that covers most of the country, and it reaches a lot further than the super flashy, super fast millimeter wave stuff. So, in other words, it's an important compromise between speed and accessibility, and it means your phone's internet connection will start to act as reliably as your home internet, and in some cases, even more reliably. If you think of this whole thing as a cake, millimeter wave is the flashy top layer with the icing and the sprinkles and the candles and low band 5G is the bottom layer that's there and it serves a purpose but no one gets worked up over it. But then again, no one wants to eat just the top or the bottom of the cake, you want the whole thing. And mid band is the crucial gooey center. And that is why everyone is talking about 5G again right now. After spending close to $70 billion for access to those mid-band frequencies, AT&T and Verizon are finally giving people the center of the cake. Or, to ditch this metaphor because I'm getting hungry, data speeds that make you say, okay, that's what the fuss was all about. But because this launch just happened, not everyone gets to benefit from it just yet. For one, you do need a pretty new phone. We're talking the iPhone 12 and 13 series, Samsung's Galaxy S21 models, Samsung's most recent folding phones, and in some cases, Google's new Pixel 6. If you're using basically anything else, I am sorry, you are for now out of luck. The other limitation is location. Verizon says it plans to cover 100 million people with this mid-band 5G this year, but right now, its own coverage maps don't make it any easier to find. And if you're an AT&T customer right now, you can use this new flavor of 5G in three cities in Texas, three in Florida, Chicago, and Detroit. And there are some places where you might have been able to use this new flavor of 5G but can't, and that's where the planes come in. You might have heard that U.S. Airlines and the Federal Aviation Administration have been trying to push back this 5G rollout. That's because the specific frequencies Verizon and AT&T have started using are a little too close to the frequencies some planes use for their radio altimeters, the instruments that tell them how far off the ground they are. And I think we can all agree those are really important things for planes to have. But even that situation is changing fast. On January 20th, the FAA said more than a dozen common airplane models have altimeters that have been cleared for use at airports where this new 5G has been deployed. Look, it's going to take time to see how this kind of 5G will spread and how aviation officials will react to it. But we can say this, we're finally just about getting to the point where buying a 5G phone might actually do you some good.